in eastern Ethiopia is a remote and arid region. Most of the population here are pastoralists, roaming large distances to find grazing for their livestock in times of water shortage. But because of the nature of the area and their lifestyle, it's very difficult for them to get animal health care. The Ethiopian government's veterinary services simply doesn't work in Mulu. There is no infrastructure and there is no conducive environment to, to live for a veterinarian, as they say. There is no uh, uh, clinics, there is no uh, even uh, houses to live, there is, no, there is nothing here. This is a village, it's a pastoral area and the people are moving from place to place. So they need a system which can go from place to place. Perhaps once a year, vets come from the agricultural bureau to do some few treatments. Apart from that, we just see the livestock die. It's hopeless. We can't do anything. The government is, is constrained in terms of delivering services in pastoral areas. The personnel, uh, very few personnel. And most of these persons are not also from the local community. That's, that's a challenge. If you are not from that area, you are not willing to stay there for a long time. Uh, the, the other thing, they, 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 they lack facilities. They, they don't have vehicles and money and, and uh, different logistic, logistical supplies to enable them to deliver the service. That's also a big constraint. But there is a solution. In 2001, individuals from the local community were chosen by the community to become animal health workers. Does anyone know about Sambop or CBPP? Difficult breathing. It takes time to sit on its front legs. After 15 days of training, the CAHWs were allowed to start treating the community's livestock for important health problems like worms and tick infection, internal and external parasites, wounds and other problems. The community animal health workers have already had a big impact. Now we are better. For example, we live in areas like this and we can't get transportation to get to towns. And it is very difficult for us to drive the sick animals there. Since the CAHWs became the service source, we go to them and they come to us. Things are now better and there is great improvement. People are very happy. They know CAHWs are people who move with them and provide a continuous service for them. And the drugs are effective. So they are very happy and I believe there is a lot of improvement. It's only through community animal health workers that are selected from the community itself that can at least give primary service and give information in times of maybe outbreaks so that government can act. Otherwise, we cannot just leave them without getting any veterinary service. Now, I think this fact is accepted by all of us. Community-based animal health is now widely seen as a solution for these problems, and CAHWs are to be found working in many projects all over the world. Before, there was a big problem. Government officials used to come, maybe once a year. They would just come and vaccinate, and then they went. Sometimes, they didn't even find all the animals and then they would disappear. When we started selecting and training the CHWs, we started seeing some light. There were animals that were dying, and there was a lot of disease before the CHWs came. Now, animals are treated. The CHWs follow animals, even into Uganda. They go to different places, and most of the diseases 
have been contained. It's better than before. One big advantage is that they are able to move with their livestock. Wherever the livestock go, they are there with them. Uh, one other big advantage is that even before their training, these people are already uh, very well endowed with the knowledge of the livestock diseases in their, in their, in their areas. But not everyone is convinced that community-based animal health is the best solution. Many people, mainly within the veterinary establishment, have doubts and worries about some aspects of the work of CAHWs. That's what we want to address now. Hello. I am Dr. Thomas Miner, and I work with Government Veterinary Service. I've been asked to write a report on the use of the so-called community animal health workers and uh, whether I think it would be a good idea to introduce them in our country. Let me say right from the outset that I think the whole idea is perfectly ridiculous. I mean, take me for example, I am a veterinary surgeon and I've learned my profession by studying seriously for more than five years at the university. Uh, these community animal health workers are taught for only two or three weeks and then they are unleashed upon the public. Now you tell me, with that kind of training, how can they possibly provide quality animal health service? This comment comes from not knowing the pastoralists uh, clearly. Um, you know, the pastoralists, uh, from, uh, from the virtue of living with their animal for a long time, they know the major problems they can, they can describe. The, the, the major livestock problems and diseases. I will demonstrate practically. It has been shown that pastoralists know as much as vets do about clinical symptoms and they can diagnose the illnesses that affect their livestock. This is the way it stands. It will also have some difficulty urinating. What pastoralists need, and the CAHW can be trained to deliver this, is up-to-date information on the correct use of the right drugs. There's another discharge. There's coughing. That is suburb. Actually, the training mainly emphasizes on introducing modern drugs. And the training should emphasize on where to inject, how to inject, the route of administration of these drugs. So these are the key knowledge that the, that the pastoralists, they don't have. For these diseases, we know how to differentiate the diseases, how to measure the doses, how to administer the drugs. I learned all that and practiced and I'm capable. CAHWs are not just trained once and then left to do their own thing. Ideally, as well as monthly supervision in which ongoing problems can be solved, they'll receive refresher training at regular intervals. In Mulu, a year and a half has passed since the initial training. Fifteen days is enough for the first training and then have some short refresher courses six monthly every year and then continue for about three years so that they will have a very good knowledge on uh, animal health. And another thing is supervision and during monitoring you will also have some uh, troubleshooting answers to the problems that, are, that they have encountered, maybe one hour, two hour discussion, then uh, you can still update their knowledge. So I think that's enough. Mm, that's as it might be. I am not convinced that these community animal health workers won't make a mistake in administering these veterinary drugs. They are pretty difficult things to handle, you know. 
better leave it to the professionals. Yes, of course, in the perfect world, it would be much better to have only veterinarians handling um, uh, veterinary medicines. But unfortunately, it's not a perfect world. Nearly all of the drugs are available from shops, pharmacies, with no advice on the dosage rate, the route of administration. There's a lot of fake drugs around. There's a lot of um, expired drugs around. In the absence of a reliable service, pastoralists have to use the black market drug suppliers working in their areas, resulting in poor use of drugs and the wrong use of them. There are no treatment services. I buy antibiotics to try to control and heal the livestock diseases. There is no one I can consult, I do it myself. When an animal is sick, it's very hard for me to know the weight of a sick cow and to know how much drug to administer. I just risk. When there is nobody to ask and nobody to help, I just assume this measure is enough and I do it myself. The masses could have been aware that these chemists are selling bad medicines or expired and so. And so because they are not, they are not there. Fortunately, the people are suffering. We've clearly shown that in those areas where community animal health workers have been trained, that the use of drugs improves. Uh, pastoralists by, the, by nature are treating their animals. Each and every pastoralist has got needle, syringe, tablets and everything. What the community animal health does is, is just rather than allowing every pastoralist to treat, Bring, take one person to treat for them. I think this will continue as far as pastoralism exists. We have classified animals to them in three categories. That is a large animal, a medium animal, a small animal. And we have given them the dosages. And they know the kind of the sizes of these animals. So in terms of dosages, we have not found any problem with the uh, overdosing or underdosing. But what about vets? I am extremely worried about the impact CHWs could have on our veterinary surgeons. If people began using the CHWs to treat their animals, this could seriously undermine the livelihood of our vets. We could end up with no one wanting to use vets at all. We, we could become extinct. Previously, especially in Ethiopia, uh, most of the vets were seeing these, these people as a threat for the profession. Maybe these people are uh, taking the job. But actually it was not true. The skepticism was because of uh, professional fear. And there was also lack of understanding uh, among the officials on what the roles of community animal health workers would be. Uh, people were thinking that they would replace the conventionally trained veterinarians, animal health assistants, and especially animal health technicians, which have a training of nine months. So people had a professional fear. But actually, with time and with involvement of knowledgeable people and uh, creating awareness on the role of community animal health workers, and with the reputations that was uh, obtained in Afar in the eradication of rinderpest, only through community animal health workers, now people at higher official levels have accepted that they will have a good role, especially for inaccessible areas. In a community-based animal health project in Pokot, Kenya, a private vet Dr. Benson Ririmpoi supervises CAHWs across the whole region from his base in Kapenguria. By using a network of CAHWs, the project can deliver services to communities up to five hours drive away, communities that would hardly ever have seen vets before. CHWs are not a threat to veterinarians. 
In fact, they are good agents, they are good clients for the vets because they can go and do the work in difficult areas where the vet could not reach. And I, I see this as, as very good for the vets. You know, this evidence is beginning to make me feel a little convinced about the community animal health workers. Maybe it's not such a bad idea. In fact, I can think of some areas where they could be useful. But there are some things I do not understand about setting up these projects. For example, where should the money to fund them come from? During the first few years, the project in Pokot was funded by an NGO. The NGO paid for the drugs and any extra profits made from selling them was given back to the NGO to buy more drugs. But the NGO needed an exit strategy. It needed to put a system in place which would keep the project running after the NGO had pulled out. I think we were realistic that we had only what, two to three years of, of donor funding and in that two to three years we have to address the issue of how can we make these people sustainable and we felt the way to do that was to link them to a private vet. The private vet wasn't there at that time so then we had to identify someone with the right attitude, with the business acumen, the entrepreneurial skills who could take on these community animal health workers. What? Working with the private sector sounds like an interesting way to fund projects. How does it work? Dr. Ririmpoi buys drugs from pharmaceutical companies and sells them to an animal health assistant, Juma, at a profit, enough to enable Dr. Ririmpoi to buy more drugs, pay the running cost of his shop, and take home a small monthly income. <laughs> Juma sells the drugs to the CAHWs in the field and makes enough profit to buy more drugs and give him an income. The CAHWs sell the drugs to the livestock owners and make enough profit to buy more drugs and give the CAHWs an income. And so it continues. The privatized system uh, is in fact more efficient and better than the NGO system. Of course, the NGO systems were designed uh, in such a way that they were not uh, business oriented or profit making or sustainable. They, they were just provi providing a service. In fact, that's what we realized, that the, even the original concept of the animal health workers, they were just supposed to provide a service. But in this particular kind of system, we have individuals at every level you know, doing business as they provide the service. And this, in the long run, will be more sustainable. But hang on. If the private sector is the one running a community animal health project, where does that leave the government? And the NGOs, for that matter? Does that mean we are shut out completely from these schemes? I think the role of NGOs uh, when setting up projects is to facilitate initially in community mobilization and in training and capacity building the community. And uh, I think that it, it, it is their responsibility also to continue to assist in technical advice and uh, supporting the community in inputting any experience that, they, that they, they have as NGOs for the success of these projects. So the government involved with the involvement with the community animal health workers, we do the training together with the NGOs. Then after that, we do the supervision and monitoring how they are carrying out the activities. Also, we tell them to report. We have given them the mode of uh, reporting. Whatever they are doing in the field, they have to report the government. 
The role of the government is to create an enabling environment and put into place policies that support private and commercial involvement and gives them the confidence to set up practices. Government also has a role to regulate through the veterinary boards and councils. Okay, you've persuaded me. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to set up a project in an area where I think the community animal health workers can really do well. But I want to do it the right way. How can I make sure that the CHWs work well and that the project lasts successfully for a long time? Now, the following things are very important in uh, making a successful community animal health worker. The community must be involved from start to finish. What are the main problems that you experience with your livestock? The Pokot community were consulted at the beginning of the project to find out what problems they had and how they thought they should be solved. Then they selected the community animal health workers. If you were to select a, a man or a woman to be treating for you these animals within yourselves, what kind of person would you select so that he would do a good job for you? And the community monitors the work of the CAHWs on an ongoing basis. Okay. Sasa we are... mm. This dialogue is a continuous process which will go up to the end of the project. So it is not something that you're going to do just at the beginning, but in each and every process, there has to be dialogue with the community. You have to report back, you have to feed back what you've done, you also have to collect their views and incorporate them in every, every step that you go through. We are the, project. the community also needs to understand the importance of making the project financially sustainable. And it still goes. We tell them that uh, this thing is, we want it to be sustainable, we want it to, to be a continuous thing. So if they continue um, paying for the services, that means the project, this, what we are doing will continue. But if they don't pay for it, then it will collapse just from the grassroots level to the private vet. If you go and call a community animal health worker, it means you are prepared to pay. Everyone is aware that these drugs are not free of charge. But in a community you have different types of people who are just stubborn. But it has been agreed, no free treatment. That is what we are fighting for because it's something that has been said across the whole of Alale. Also vital to the long-term success of community-based animal health is monitoring and assessment. Essentially, if you, if you don't monitor your project, then you don't know where you're going. Uh, you don't know if you're standing still or moving forward. We feel it's vital that every project at the start should, should lay out how it's going to monitor and set those milestones which it's aiming for. Through monitoring, you identify what you have done good, what you have not done good which means you feed back that into replanning process. You have to improve your work from time to time. So if you want to prove, improve the next year's work, you have to look into the past year's achievement. And the only way to look into the past year's achievement is when you have appropriate monitoring system. Well, this is the report I was asked to write. In it, I say that from the evidence, it seems that the community animal health workers are a very good solution to the problems of remote areas that do not have enough vets to provide a conventional veterinary service. And I recommend that some projects be started up in this country with a full support and participation of the veterinary service. Will it work? Well, I hope so. We'll have to wait to hear from the people using the veterinary services, the livestock owners themselves. Masiwa. We drink milk, eat good meat, we draw the blood, and the blood is disease free. When we met the animals, the bulls don't have a problem. They met well. And when the calves are born, they are healthy. Long ago, when there were lots of diseases, when a cow calved, you found the cows were very small and weak. 
So these days, they are healthier. Before these people were trained, I can say we used to lose all our animals at the times of disease outbreak. Most of the ones that became sick used to die. But now we are better because they are here. And we ask you to give us some more community animal health workers. A series of six training videos that look at how to establish an effective CAHW program are available. A CAHW project has been running in Alali, a region in the West Pokot district of Kenya for the past six years. It has been very successful in delivering animal health care in an area that was poorly served by the conventional veterinary services. Initial funding was provided by the donors and NGOs, but in 1999, the donors and NGOs started planning what would happen when their involvement in the project stopped. They wanted to make sure that when they withdrew their money, the project could still keep going. We were very aware that many, many community animal health worker projects fail. So many projects train community animal health workers and monitor them and supervise them as long as there's donor funding there. As soon as that finishes, the project goes away, the community animal health workers are left high and dry without a sustainable source of drugs or support. And many of them become dormant, some of them remain in the private sector and are then called quacks because they have no linkages to any, any veterinary supervision. Now, because we had to have an exit strategy, we had to look for a vet who was finally going to be the supplier of the drugs to the community animal health workers so that the system is sustainable. The Pokot project has been operating under a cost recovery system where the NGO bought the drugs. Any extra profits made from selling the drugs to the community were given back to the NGO to buy more drugs. But with the new privatized system, a private vet, Dr. Benson Nirimpoi, is at the center of drug provision. Here is how it works in Pokot. I procure the drugs from the pharmaceutical companies uh, who are mainly based in Nairobi. We will send the drugs by public transport, either to Kitali or to Kapenguria. Uh, we have uh, this drug store here, where we store the drugs. And uh, the AHTs come and uh, buy the drugs from here. Dr. Ririmpoi sells the drugs to Juma, the animal health technician at 10% profit. Hi. So, thank you. Okay. This enables Dr. Ririmpoi to buy more drugs, pay for the running cost of his shop, 
and take a small monthly income. Juma then makes the long journey to Alale to deliver the drugs to the CAHWs.